Welcome back everybody. So in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Scarpa Rebella HD men's hiking boot. As you can see from this boot, it's a very unique looking boot. It's a fairly new model for Scarpa and it's kind of a cross between a running shoe and a hiking boot and a very unique kind of look. It's got a very aggressive rubber that goes around the tread and a very nice luggy looking tread and just overall very kind of cool to look at. A nice looking boot. Uh, I bought this boot as a light hiking boot, something that was going to be very nimble and light and agile. I have other boots which I'm going to compare this to, but that's why I bought this boot. And so I'm going to talk through what I like about this boot, what I don't like about this boot, and I'm going to compare it to other boots that I've bought and how it performs in comparison to those other boots. So first, let's do a brief comparison to other boots. The first boot that I want to compare it to is the Arteryx, and I don't know how to say this. It's their light hiking boot, Acrux, or something like that. Look it up on their website if you're interested. This is an extremely light boot. This was the first boot that I purchased. I've since then given this to my younger son, who doesn't do as much hiking as I do, and is much lighter, is not carrying a pack, just basically going out for, for a walk, and works very well for him. There are some nice features on this boot. There's the locking lace mechanism right here, which I, I like, which allows you to separate the tightness between your forefoot and the ankle. And I'm going to talk about that with the Scarpa. But it was just too light for me, I found. And so I didn't get the, the performance that I needed from this boot, which made me kind of move up a level and look at the Scarpa boot. The boot the Scarpa is replacing is this one. And as you can see, it is aged and worn and very extensively used. This boot is about a decade old and has served me very well. I don't know who makes it. Oh, I, here we go. Rachel, Rachel, R-A-I-C-H-L-E. Since bought by another company, but uh, just a wonderful boot, full leather boot, and has just done an amazing job. Like I said, it's over a decade old, and you could see it's just super worn, but you know, I still put this on sometimes because not only is it super comfortable, but it just works. And when I wear it now, I can definitely tell that it has seen better days and it was time for a new boot. So that's what prompted me to go out and get the Scarpa. So this is what I'm really comparing it to. A light backpacking boot that I can carry maybe a 50 pound pack, multi-day hike, and not suffer and want something reasonably comfortable and functional. So this is the, this is the bar that I set for the Scarpa. This is one of the boots that I try never to wear. So this is my full mountaineering boot a very robust boot, a very heavy boot. It's great if you're not moving around a lot or you just have some very gnarly terrain that you need to get through, but it is a very unforgiving boot. It is not a what I would call a comfortable or relaxed boot. This boot's all about business, all about getting it done. It's fully crampon compatible and just very sturdy boot, and it's gonna serve you well in the times that you need it, but it is not going to let your foot relax, I guess is the best way to say it. It's going to be uncomfortably stiff. So there's that. So I wanted something that was more nimble, more comfortable, more a little bit more relaxed, not quite such a business boot and something that I could just hike in and uh, and would get me to where I need to go in the most comfort as possible. Okay, so those were some of the boots that we can compare this to that I have and that I use. And now you kind of understand why I would buy this boot, what the idea is behind it, and what I'm looking for in a boot. And I would imagine that's pretty similar to what you're looking for. A multi-day hiker, sure, you could just do one day, but the capabilities to do multi-day, carrying a pack perhaps, maybe up to 50 pounds, and something that's going to be functional for, for all of that. And, and this would, I would think, would qualify. So let's start off with what I like about this boot. What I like are all the standard things that you would see on the website that talk about this boot. It's a fast boot, so it's based on kind of a, a hybrid technology between your runners and a hiking boot. So as you can see, it's not super luggy as far as a boot. Not, not as bad as my Alpine boot, of course, right? It's got a very aggressive 
tread of this Vibram tread. It works great. I can definitely vouch for that. Very, very sticky on the rocks, really luggy for grip. Very nice. It's got this full rubber outer that wraps all the way around the boot. And just not only does it look cool, but it's very functional as well. You've got the suede on the upper, which has served me quite well and works quite good. You can see this boot is quite dirty. I put it through the paces. Quite durable suede. I like that quite a bit. It's crampon compatible, although it's not super robust in that way. You could put on certain class crampons, but not obviously every type of crampon. It retails for about $360 US. The looks of this boot, it's a nice looking boot, right? I, I can't complain about what this boot looks like at all. I think that's probably one of the reasons I bought this boot was just because it looks nice. I, I like it. The materials on this boot, quite nice, right? So not a lot of synthetic. There's the nice suede upper, which not only looks good, but it's also very nice to the touch. Of course, you've got the rubber synthetic on the bottom, the Vibram sole, stuff like that. A little synthetic on the inside, of course. Overall, I would say the materials are quite nice. I would say quite of good quality. Of course, this won't be as robust as my leather boots that I just showed you. I do not expect these boots to last a decade like my leather boots did. I think these will self-destruct in maybe anywhere from two to three years, I would expect. One of the things I really like is the bottom part of this boot, the rubber, right? It almost feels as if the tread just kind of wraps around the boot and extends almost to the upper, right? You've got this whole area. So if you're doing a scramble up some rocky area, you're not going to rip apart this part of your boot. Quite often the toe area will get some pretty bad damage. Quite often it'll peel back and that looks really ugly. That is not going to happen on this boot. If it did, I would just be very surprised. But it is very robust around that area. And that's usually where you would see some deterioration of the fabric. So I think that that is not going to be a problem with this boot. And it, it looks cool as well. So I think full marks there for the materials. Very impressed with that. Likewise, the lacing material. And I'm going to talk about the lacing system in a little more detail because I do have some critique around that but the material of the laces is very nice it's a nice feel it holds the knot well and uh, i can't really complain about the material of the lacing or the lace eyes at all those are quite nicely done nicely placed and so no complaints there for materials chosen so overall quality for the money i would say is so far great so full Rand, this is not a super flexible boot, right? I'm trying to move it there. It is not going to give you much bend. They say that it's based off of a hybrid runner hiking boot model, but don't think that it's going to bend like your runners do because it, it doesn't, which is good in my opinion. You don't want a hiking boot that's super flexible like the Arteryx boot that I showed you. You want something more like this. The website will say that these are handmade in Italy. Well, you know what, Scarpa? I think I would probably call you on that because I really doubt that these are handmade. Perhaps we can argue the semantics of what handmade means, but when you say handmade, I'm visualizing a bunch of people putting these together by hand, which obviously they're not doing. If you've got some people that are putting some pieces on by hand after the fact, then Sure, I would believe that, but handmade, probably not. Probably uh, hand assisted, maybe hand added, you know, any of those things, but obviously not handmade, right? So a little bit of tricky advertising there, I suppose, but I'm not going to deduct marks for that. It is a quality boot. Okay, so let's talk about my likes for this boot. Pretty easy. The look of this boot, of course, pretty flash looking boot overall. I think I like it. I like the look. I like the look on the website. When I got it, again, no difference, still like the look. When people see me wearing these boots, they often say, hey, nice boots. The overall feel of this boot when I'm wearing it, that was the real big positive for me. Many boots that I tried on, I just didn't like the feel. What I'm looking for is something that gives me enough room in the toe box, but then also locks in my heel, much like a good ski boot would. Also have some flexibility up here in the ankle area, but, but not too much. Overall handling when wearing this boot, so because it fits my foot so well, 
and it is a light boot. It handles nicely on rock or gravel or any sort of trail. I didn't find any issues. It's not big and clunky like my mountaineering boot, yet it is not too light where I feel every little bump like those lighter Arcteric boots. So yeah, so great overall feel and function that way. I've said this before, but I also really like the tread and that whole rubber piece around the boot. For me, they scored huge points with that feature because this is where I tear boots apart typically just around in this area. So for me, I haven't seen many boots with this sort of design. I suspect we're gonna see more with this sort of feature, but yeah, I think that that scores a lot of points right there as well. The weight of this boot is only 690 grams, which is just under two pounds, which is a pretty light boot. It's not much heavier than the Arteryx boot, but a lot lighter than my mountaineering boot. These are a pleasure to wear on long trips. Your feet are not gonna get overly tired as a result of the weight of this boot. So for those multi-day hikes where you want to keep weight to a minimum and you want to move fast, this is great. If you're a first responder like I am and you want to be able to move quickly through the mountains, again, this is another good choice. What I also like, of course, is the full rand in this boot. It's not super flexible, but when I'm walking over tricky terrain, that full rand is definitely appreciated. I really like that. I also like the fact that this is fairly waterproof. I wouldn't say necessarily waterproof, water resistant maybe. This suede will soak up some moisture over time. So if you go stand in a river, your feet will eventually get wet. If it comes over the top, of course, it's gonna get wet right away, but it's gonna come through this tongue fairly quickly. It's not like my mountaineering boots in that regard, whereas those I've stood in a river before uh, where the water was not, of course, up to the top, but coming over the toe piece and my feet did not get wet. I didn't stand there for very long, but I have no doubt that if I stood in a river with these, of course, my feet are gonna get wet, even if that is a very short duration. However, if I'm just walking through a wet forest, I think my feet are gonna do fairly well, and, and they have. So I think overall, this satisfies the requirement for me just for moisture. It's, it's water resistant enough. So that brings me to what I don't like about this boot. And I said that the fit and the feel was very good. And it is, I, I don't wanna take away from that. However, for my foot, it needed a little bit more volume. And so I did replace the foot liner in here with another footbed that I bought aftermarket, which had a little bit more volume. And that made it pretty much a perfect fit for me. So I was being picky. I don't think that's necessarily a requirement for you but it, it might be. So something to think about. If you just need a little bit more volume, think about getting in a footbed aftermarket. It'll give you that little bit more that you may need. It worked very well for me. So that's not a big deal really, but it's it, it could be an improvement. Getting to some of the bigger issues that I have with this boot, and they are significant enough to, to really talk about. One is the lacing. So even though the laces are of good quality and the components are of good quality, the lacing system on this boot, I think could be improved. On most hiking boots, there's a way to separate the tension from the lower half to the top half of the lacing system so that your toe box can be one tightness and your ankle area can be another level of tightness. This boot does not have that. So right here, for example, there is no mechanism to stop the lace or to cinch it down. A lot of boots, they'll have a little kind of detent where you can push and it will stop the tightness right there. And then you can reestablish tightness on the top ankle part here. This boot doesn't have that. So it's gonna be one uniform tightness all the way through. So if you want a looser toe box, you're gonna end up with a looser ankle support area as well. Not as good. To compound that problem with this boot, this tongue, you'll notice, looks great right now, but when you're wearing this boot, what you'll find is the tongue will slip out like that, and it'll start to ride over the side of the boot like this. I, I really don't like that, because when I look down, sometimes your pants will get caught on there and things like that. I either want it fully out, which actually nobody would want it fully out, but you, you probably want it fully in, right, like that, so it lines up properly. But there's no way to keep it like that with this boot. There's no lacing system where you can go through the tongue, which I probably wouldn't do anyway. 
but there's just also no way to keep a consistent tightness just in this area because the tightness is distributed throughout the whole lacing system. So I think that that was probably just a cost option there or a cost decision on, the, on behalf of Scarpa where they thought, okay, let's just not add this feature on this boot to bring cost down. I don't think it would cost that much more just to add that small feature right here where you just have a little clip that folds down that locks the lace in place. That would have made the whole experience so much better in my opinion because it would have made the fit better. It would have stopped this weird thing that happens with the tongue where it does that. And it would have allowed us to make sure that, that that's tight where it needs to be and that's loose where it needs to be. And I just think that would, for your next year's model, maybe that's something to think about. I think that would be well worth the additional cost. Definitely would be for me. Probably would make me buy this boot again. The lacing system, the tongue, how it gets all weirded out like that. Small thing, but definitely something that I'm not keen on. Really, there's only two big things that I could see where we could improve this boot, and that's the first one. And the second one is this curvature. You see how on the toe it curves up quite aggressively right here. I, I don't really like that, and I think the reason they did that was because they're trying to simulate a quick moving runner with this boot. They achieved that, it's a nice nimble boot. However, this boot is quite often used when you're having an approach to say a small mountain or a hill or rock area. And having the toe sloped up like this takes away from your ability to do a toe in on the rock to be able to get yourself up more of a vertical incline. My preference would be if this was a little bit flatter Rather than, rather than sloping up like this, if it just was either flat or, or just came up a little bit, most boots will have a small incline on the toe area, which is totally acceptable. This one just seems to be a little bit aggressive in that area. I'm not sure why, so if you have insights into why they did it like that, please let me know in the comments down below. My guess is they did it for stride, so that when you're walking, you've got more of a toe off point here from your walking mode and and that's fine i could see how that might save some energy i don't think it really does personally i definitely haven't noticed that between this and my other boots that have more of a flat angle here but i have noticed in those other boots that have less of an incline in the toe that it's much easier to do a toe in and push me vertically than it is with this boot with this boot i find i'm kind of searching for that grip on the toe when I'm just making contact there because of the aggressive angle there. And it's actually, I think, easier to slip off because you're, you're trying to get it here and it's just kind of doing that. Rather than if it was straight in, it'd be this and you got that solid contact there. So I'm confused why they did that. I think it was for speed of movement going horizontally less than thinking about the vertical. But I don't think that it gets you those gains and I think you lose gains on the vertical. So if you've got comments on that, please let me know because I'm confused why they did that because to me, they lost a lot of points on this boot as a result of that. Those are my two big dislikes on this boot. Not a lot, right? Overall, I think this boot is really nicely designed, very high quality for the money. So it is a good light hiking boot. So who would use this boot? I think day hikers would definitely use this boot. Multi-day hikers could use this boot for sure. If you're going into an area that has a lot of vertical, well, I think you need to look at this toe box and figure out if that's gonna work for you. I think this is a good boot for first responders like myself, that's why I bought it. This boot is something I would wear for a task that I expect to last maybe one to multiple days. So I think that's going to work for, for most people, right? This is a pretty good option to at least take a look at. Who is this boot not for? I think, again, if you're doing a lot of vertical, maybe not. Take a look at the toe box and see if it's going to work for you. If you're carrying a very heavy load on your back, then again, this is a light hiking boot. So it's not going to be as robust nor give you as much support as a heavier duty hiking boot. So you want to take a look at that and see if this is going to be a supportive enough boot for that activity. This boot 
also is not going to be for runners. They kind of market this as a hybrid between a running shoe and a hiking boot, but it is in no way meant for running. Again, see, there's no flexibility at all in this boot, which is good for what I want to use it for, for hiking with load, but it's not going to be something I would ever run in. So keep or return. Am I going to keep this boot or send it back? For me, I'm going to keep this boot for multiple reasons. Overall, I think it's a good hiking boot for my purposes and probably for yours. I would give it about a 7 out of 10. I'm very frustrated with the lacing system. I'm trying to deal with that. I'm also disappointed with the toe box angle here, but those are not deal breakers for me. Overall, I think the other areas make up for those deficiencies. If you're going to have more load or you're going to go for more days on the trail, I would recommend perhaps looking at a full leather boot with a little bit more support and robust features. If you're just like me and you're going for the day and you're going to have a lighter pack, then I think this could be satisfactory and that's really why I'm keeping this boot. Scarpa also makes a boot called the Mantra. It looks very similar to this. So if you like the look of this boot, but you want something a little bit more robust, check out the Mantra. It's about 100 grams heavier than this boot. So a little bit heavier might be a good option if you like this boot, but you want something that can help you carry heavier loads. And it has a few of those options that you're looking for. So definitely something to check out besides this one. Be good to compare those two side by side which I have not done yet, but if you have, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear how this compares to the Mantra because they are very similar looking boots. So that's it for today. Overall, I'm very satisfied with this boot. There's just those two things that are frustrating for me around this boot, but again, those are not deal breakers. I think if you're looking for a hiking boot, definitely check this boot out. I think you're probably going to be happy with it, and I think it's going to be a good hiking boot for most people. If you already have this boot, please let me know what you like and don't like about it. I'd love to hear about that in the comments down below. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks a lot, everybody. Happy trails.